So in the last video, we learned that atmosphere is very important. It is the blanket of air that surrounds the earth and keeps it warm. We also learned that the atmosphere comprises of five distinct layers and we learned in details about the very first layer that is the troposphere. So today in this video, we will learn about the other four important layers in details. So now that we've learned about the first layer, we know that the boundary or the end of the first layer is marked by the tropopause, right? So this tropopause, while it marks the end of the first layer, it also marks the beginning of the second layer and that is the stratosphere. Therefore, the tropopause marks the beginning of the second layer of the atmosphere and that is the stratosphere. Right? So in the last video, we learned that in the troposphere, that is the first layer of the atmosphere, the temperature keeps rising as we go to higher altitudes. But when we come to the second layer, that is after the tropopause, where there is no mixing of temperatures, in the stratosphere, what happens is the temperature starts gradually rising. Right? So as we go higher into the stratosphere, it gets hotter and hotter. So talking about the second layer of the atmosphere, that is stratosphere, it is above the troposphere and extends to a height of 50 km from the Earth's surface, as you can see here. We also need to remember that in this particular layer, we have a very important region and that is the ozone layer. We will learn about this later in details, but we need to remember that ozone layer is nothing different or separate part from this layer. It is just a part of this layer. So the stratosphere is inclusive of the ozone layer. So you must have seen various advertisements on different types of sunscreens. So what exactly do they do? They protect our skin from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun, right? But there is a natural sunscreen that the earth also has. So even the earth has a sunscreen and that is the ozone layer. So, a part of the stratosphere is known as ozonosphere or simply the ozone layer and it has the maximum concentration of ozone in the atmosphere. So, basically ozone layer is nothing separate from this layer of atmosphere. It is just a part of stratosphere, right? There is high concentration of ozone in the lower region of this stratosphere. Now, what does it do? This ozone layer acts as a sunscreen as I've already mentioned. It absorbs the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun that could cause major damage to our health and skin. And there is a problem. What is the problem? Due to various human activities, there are holes in this ozone layer that has occurred over the years. So these holes in the ozone layer are letting or allowing the UV rays, the harmful UV rays of the sun to reach the earth's surface directly, which is not very right. So let's see a video on this. So you see that the ozone layer is a part of the stratosphere with high concentration of ozone gases here. So what do they do? They are here to protect the earth from the harmful ultraviolet rays. So you can see they are present at this altitude where they protect the earth from the harmful ultraviolet rays that could directly pass through the atmosphere. So they filter these ultraviolet rays and radiate it back into the space. Coming to another very interesting fact. Well, do you know why is it convenient to fly airplanes and commercial jet aircrafts in this layer of the atmosphere? Well, this is because of the absence of clouds and very little water vapor and dust particles present in this particular layer of the atmosphere. So because of this, it experiences no turbulence and 
weather phenomena does not occur at this part of the atmosphere it generally occurs in the first layer of the atmosphere as we have learnt in the last video right so you see that the planes the commercial planes and jets they usually climb to the second layer of the atmosphere where there is no turbulence due to the absence of cloud and it can easily travel so can you help me answer this question well which layer experiences almost no turbulence or major weather phenomena is it troposphere is it tropopause or stratosphere or is it the mesosphere yes the answer is the stratosphere due to the absence of clouds and very little dust particles and water vapor now just like tropopause is the boundary of the first layer of the atmosphere similarly stratopause is the boundary or the end of the second layer of the atmosphere and that is stratosphere so now let's summarize the second layer of the atmosphere so the very first point says that it extends up to 50 kilometers from the earth's surface next due to absence of clouds and very little dust particles and water vapor there is no weather phenomena also it contains the ozone layer which protects us from the ultraviolet rays of the sun that are very very harmful thus acting as a very good sunscreen lastly it is separated from the mesosphere that is the third layer of the atmosphere by the stratopause right so now we will study about the third layer of the atmosphere that is the mesosphere so we know that the earth's atmosphere protects us from meteoroid encounters this is actually done by this layer of the atmosphere the mesosphere does not let the meteorites come into the atmospheric layers so it protects the earth these meteorites on entering the atmospheric layer turns into meteors or shooting stars you must have heard about shooting stars and they very beautiful well this is all because of these meteors that enter into the earth's atmosphere therefore the mesosphere lies just above the stratosphere and it is separated by the stratopause stratopause that is the end of stratosphere also marks the beginning of the mesosphere now the word mesosphere is derived from the greek words mesos and sphaira so what does this mean this means middle layer so we now know that mesosphere is the middle layer of the atmosphere right and also it extends up to 80 kilometers from the earth's surface so as you can see on this very graph that mesosphere lies just in between the atmospheric layers thus it is known as the middle layer of the atmosphere now we have learned that as we go higher in the tropospheric layer the temperature falls down so it gets cooler while we enter the second layer that is the stratosphere it gets hotter as we go higher into the stratospheric layer now when we come into the mesosphere or the third layer of the atmosphere what happens is the temperature starts falling rapidly because of the minimum absorption of solar energy in this layer so the temperatures can fall down up to minus 90 degree or minus 85 degree centigrade so because the temperatures fall down to that very extent it is known as the coldest layer of the atmosphere so let's summarize the third layer of the atmosphere the very first point says that it is separated from the stratosphere with this layer the strato pause secondly it is located approximately 80 kilometers from the earth surface 
Thirdly, meteors burn in this layer due to friction. And lastly, it is the coldest layer of the atmosphere. So what do you see here? Well, this is the International Space Station that has been orbiting since its launch in 1998. So where is this located? So the International Space Station is located in the fourth layer of the atmosphere and that is the thermosphere. You also need to know that the thermosphere is also known as ionosphere. Why is it so? Because of the presence of electrically charged particles called ions. These ions reflect radio waves to the Earth's surface and help in radio transmission. So the thermosphere extends to a height of 450 km from the Earth's surface and it is separated from the mesosphere by the layer called the mesopause. So the mesopause, while it marks the end of mesosphere, at the same time it also marks the beginning of the thermosphere, right? Also, we know that the mesosphere is the coldest region or the coldest layer of the atmosphere. On the other hand, the layer just above it, that is thermosphere, is the hottest layer of the atmosphere. Why so? Because the temperature starts rising rapidly with the altitude in this layer. So from the very word thermo, which is related to heat, we know that this is the hottest layer of the atmosphere. Now, have you heard about this beautiful phenomena? This is aurora that is usually seen in the polar regions and it tends to occur in the thermosphere. So now let's summarize the fourth layer of the atmosphere. The very first point says that it is the thickest layer of the atmosphere, right? Secondly, it extends up to 450 km from the Earth's surface. Thirdly, it is separated from the mesosphere by the mesopause layer. So now how do you remember which is the hottest layer of the atmosphere? Well, the very name thermosphere out of which thermo is related to heat. So it is very simple that this layer is the hottest layer of the atmosphere. Well, the obvious reason is also that the temperatures rise very rapidly with altitude in this layer. Lastly, it facilitates wireless communication. Why so? Because of the presence of electrically charged ions that reflects radio waves back to the Earth's surface and help in radio transmission. We must not forget of the beautiful phenomena, aurora, that also occurs in this layer. Now, so what do you understand from the title? Fade to black. Interesting, right? Well, here we are talking about the uppermost layer of the atmosphere. Here, there is presence of hydrogen atoms that spreads weak ultraviolet but radioactive glow. So, this is the uppermost or the last layer of the atmosphere and it is known as exosphere, right? Now, it is believed that exosphere extends up to a height of 1600 km and gradually merges with this space. Therefore, there is no definite boundary as to where this layer stops. Lastly, we also know that there is presence of hydrogen and helium atoms in this particular layer of atmosphere. So if you have been very attentive, you must have noticed that the temperature fluctuation in the different layers of the atmosphere is almost in a zigzag pattern. So in the first layer, the temperature falls as we go higher in this layer, while in the second layer on going higher, we see that the temperature is rising. Again, in the mesosphere or the third layer, we see that the temperatures are falling to a great extent, making it the coldest layer of the atmosphere. Again, going to the fourth layer, that is thermal 
atmosphere, the temperatures rise up to a great extent and makes it the hottest layer of the atmosphere. So we don't really have much information about the temperature changes in the last layer or the uppermost layer of the atmosphere that is exosphere because research is still going on about this layer. Not much is known of this layer and scientists are still going on with the studies of this layer. So in the last video we learnt about the first layer of the atmosphere in details but in today's video we learnt about the rest four layers of the atmosphere in details and we understood that each has a unique characteristic. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.